Hello, it's Thursday and it is time for another Not My Idea pattern. So you all voted and Red Panda was the winner. I have to say, I really do enjoy the vocal minority that gets behind one of sort of the less popular ideas in these polls when they happen. This time it was Squirrels. So Squirrels this time only got 18% of the vote, but 43% of the comments mentioned them. Anyway, the second chance draw will be live on Patreon shortly. I look forward to seeing what else gets selected. And that pattern will be out sometime in July. Now, just as one final note before we get into this project properly, uh, I have entered a couple of my designs in Amigurumi.com's design contest. The theme this time around was endangered animals. There are some incredible designs entered this time, so you should check it out before voting closes. I will leave a link down below. I am in it. You can choose to vote or not, but I encourage all of you to go check them out just because there's more than 700 entries and they're all so well done. All right, so let's talk about tools and materials. So for today, you're going to need eight ply, 100% acrylic yarn, also known as DK, in three different colors. So you're going to need a highlight, a mid-tone, and a shadow. So you can see on, on this particular one, I've used white for my highlight, pale yellow for my mid-tone, and then just a bright yellow for my shadow tone. And today I'm going to be adding a blue red panda to my mix. You're also going to need a pair of 15 millimeter safety eyes, your 3.5 millimeter hook. And I haven't said this in a really long time, but the reason I use a 3.5 millimeter hook and not the four millimeter hook recommended by this yarn size is because I feel it gives me a tighter stitch with less visible stuffing in between. You're also going to need scissors, pins and needles, and some stuffing, but that's it. So you may have noticed that for the example there, I used a yellow red panda and that I've told you that today I'm gonna to be making a blue red panda. And for a while there, it looked like this is going to become an anything but red red panda. I got a little carried away and I made so many of these in so many different colors that I had used every pair of my 15 millimeter safety eyes before I realized I had never made a red one. Luckily, I had one pair of 15 millimeter safety eyes left and I did end up whipping up one in the more traditional red, red panda colors. So yeah, I got carried away. Um, I'm completely out of 15 millimeter safety eyes. And today we're making a blue red panda is the long story short. <laughs> now a copy of this pattern will be made available to my patrons and will also be up on Etsy. I will leave a link to both in the description down below for anyone who is interested. Okay, so I'm gonna use my little green fellow here to show you what we're going to be doing today. So this red panda is made in a couple of different pieces. So first up, we're going to work on the head, body and tail piece. Now this is all one piece, starting at the tip of the nose, working up the head, working up the body, and then it flows straight into the tail. And I did that because who can be bothered sewing tails on, am I right? Yeah. So we're gonna start by grabbing your light color, which for me is white. And we're going to start by working up to 15 stitches around over the course of four rows. So there we are at the end of row five. So you should have 15 stitches around and it should be looking like a loose triangle. So in the next row, we're gonna start working up the color changes. Now, I'm gonna bring some faces onto the screen here as examples. That's about, ex <laughs> so this is actually the first one that I made. So his face has actually changed since here. So he's not a good example, which is the only reason he's not getting as much screen time as the other two, okay? Not because we love him any less. So you'll note that we use a combination of all three colors to make this head. We've got like the light tone making eyebrows and face stripes. We've got the dark tone taking up the bottom half of the face and we have the light tone basically staying on top. I'm not gonna sit here and uh, tell you that these stripes are going to come out perfectly for you either. I don't wanna misrepresent what this is. You'll note that the, the eyebrows are a little bit different from one side to the other. And if you pay really close attention you'll see these cheek stripes start in a slightly different spot on either side of the head as well. Now, I honestly just consider that a byproduct of the fact that I prefer to work in a spiral. Everything tends to skew a little bit to one side. I like to think that it adds personality and character, but I wanted to stop you right here if you're expecting perfectly symmetrical patches on this guy. You're, go you're in for a bad time. <laughs> the worst of it does get covered up by the eyes, and so you do end up with a relatively even looking panda in the end if you can trust the process. So in row five, the first thing we're actually going to be doing is a color change. Now, 
With this pattern and with all of my patterns, whenever you need to change colors, you always want to change in the stitch before you need the new color to be active. So because we're starting row five in our mid-tone, which for me is this pale blue, it means that I need to do that color change in the last stitch of row four. So I'm going to frog that last stitch and we're going to work our color change there instead. So these color changes are so simple. I think I record this tutorial in basically every video. <laughs> basically all you do is this is a single crochet. So we're going to start working that single crochet, insert your hook, yarn over or under and pull up a loop. So you've got two loops of your existing color on your hook. I hold my color out of the way down the hook, grab the new color I'm changing to and pinch it at the base of the stitch, just like that. So. I'm pinching it, I'm, I've got some tension on it and I've got the tail trailing off in the same direction as my old colour. I'm going to once again yarn under or over as per your preference and pull through to complete the stitch. Now you'll note that the stitch looks a little bit wibbly wobbly and I'm just going to give this tail a gentle tug until that stitch is sitting in there correctly. So what you're left with is a full stitch in your old colour but you've got your new colour on your hook ready to go. Now for this pattern, because we are changing colors quite a bit, particularly in this head and body, I am not going to be cutting off my yarn with every color change. Instead, I'm just going to either pull it across the work to where I need the next color change to be or carry it under for some of the longer stretches as well. So without trimming off our white, we are going to start working in our light blue. Now the first five stitches we do are front post single crochet. So post crochet is when you're working around the post of the stitch rather than through the loops. So you would normally insert your hook through these loops, but instead we're going to insert through the gaps of the stitches. Now, because it's front post, it means we're inserting our hook from the front of the piece, around that post and back to the front of the piece, just like that. Yarn over and pull up a loop, and then yarn over and complete the single crochet. So there is our first one, and we're going to do the same thing in the next four stitches. So there are our five front post single crochet. And what that's doing is giving you a definition between the snout and the top of the head. And this is what's going to sit at the top of your nose. Now the rest of row five is actually completed in our darkest color, which for me today is this bright blue here. So that is my darkest color. So that means that that last front post single crochet has to be a color change as well. So I'm gonna frog it. And if you're careful, you don't need to frog it the whole way. You can just slip that final loop out and grab the, the two loops back on your hook. Of course, if you're actually reading the pattern ahead of time, which I do recommend you do, you won't get caught out like that and you'll just do the color change the first time around and not have to frog. So there we go. So I've got that final front post single crochet in my mid tone and I've swapped it to my dark tone and I'm going to work up the rest of that row. Now, because I'm swapping back to single crochet, I'm sorry that this is so much information for this particular row guys, but bear with me. Because I am changing back to single crochet from doing post crochet, I'm gonna count backwards from my hook until I hit 15 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, because it's a trap. Guys, it's a total trap. When working around the post, it totally looks like this should be the next stitch, but it's actually this one here. So I can work my next stitch here. So from there, I'm going to finish working up row five, changing back to my mid tone in the final stitch. So I'm just changing my color back now and we're changing back to our mid tone and you'll note that I didn't carry it under. I'm just going to pull it across the work like that. So you make sure you have a little bit of slack so that it's not pulling the work tightly and buckling it, but just running it across, I think is perfectly legitimate. If you can't, can't be bothered crocheting over the top. If you do crochet over the top, it might peek through. That's just something to be aware of. So there is our finished row five. So now we're just going to work up the next five rows. In the next row, there are several pairs of brackets. So this is just your reminder that whenever you encounter a pair of brackets, 
you just work the, the stitch instructions that are inside the brackets the number of times that are listed on the outside. For example, we have an increase and a single crochet inside the bracket and a two on the outside, so we work that twice. And then you just move on to the next instruction in the row, and if it's another pair of brackets, you do the same thing again. So just take it sort of one mouthful at a time. We do have a lot of color changes in these five rows. I mean, not that many when compared to the frog, but still quite a few for your average pattern. So I would caution you to just be really careful when reading that you are using the correct color. Now I'm also going to recommend that you check your stitch count at the end of each row. Sometimes your color changes pull a little bit tightly and it can cause you to drop a stitch in the row and end up with the wrong number. So what we're doing structurally with these five rows is you'll note that our increases are all grouped into three main points. They are the top of the head and one on each side of the face for the cheeks. So when you group your increases like that, you're going to really emphasize the triangular shape of the head. So there we are at the end of row 10 and we can actually trim our white off at this point and untangle it from uh, the umbilical cord that we have forming with our yarns. So in the interest of transparency, this is what the inside of my piece currently looks like. See that absolute mess of yarns? Now some of these are pretty tight and you're going to want to keep an eye on that. If any of them are distorting your work as in you can't like freely fold it in any direction that you like, you might want to take a pair of scissors and just carefully trim the middle of the torta pieces. But if it's not an issue, it's better to leave it whole. So I am going to put in my eyes at this point here. So as I've been advising more and more recently, I would recommend you position your eyes now, but if you're unsure, don't snap the backs on until later in the project when you can double check where things are. I think positioning your eyes early helps orient your piece so you can tell easily which way is up, but snapping the backs on and locking them into position can always wait until slightly further on in the piece. So I've got my eye here and they go into row six of the head. So find your magic ring and count backwards. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And you want to line it up so that one edge of the eye touches that front post single crochet ridge we put in at the top of the nose. So there's my first one. I'm gonna put the other one in on the other side. And just do your best to like visually balance them in the space. And you're going to wanna to try and make sure that your cheek patches are balanced on either side as well. So this will take a little bit of fiddling to get them the right distance apart. I'm pretty happy with this, but I'm personally going to wait until later on to snap my backs on in case I want to tweak them slightly. So we have one more row to work on the head before we work on the curve of the neck. And it starts with single crocheting three together, but I do those as invisible decreases. So all that means is that I'm picking up the front loops of the next three stitches like that. You can see them on my hook. I yarn over and I pull through all three of those, two loops on the hook, and then yarn over and finish the stitch. So I use decrease threes slash single crocheting three together whenever I want to create a more pronounced corner or bulge to the work. A regular decrease I find can sit a little flat and uh, whereas something like this requires a little bit more of a design detail. I also find it really helpful with smaller makes like this one here where you have to pack like a lot of designing into a really small space. So you don't have the option of like grouping three decreases, which is six stitches. And that's a big, that's a lot of real estate in your round, you know? So we've just done a second one there and those are going to form like the top two corners of the head and I can already see like my eyes are maybe slightly drifted to one side but I'll see how I feel about that later. We're not going to worry about that now. So I'm just going to quickly work up the rest of this round. go at the end of row 11. Now what we're going to be doing next is working up the curve at the back of the head. So you can see it pretty clearly here. That is what's allowing us to have this head sitting at a different angle to the body. And we're going to do that by using some short rows 
which, I mean, I'm sure you've all come to expect from my patterns by now. A million colour changes and some short rows sprinkled in for good measure. So the good news is, is that your short rows are all worked entirely in your mid-tone, so for me the pale blue, and they are all worked in the top half of the head. So you'll see what I mean in a second. So the first one, we're going to start with three repeats of a decrease and then a single crochet. And then a decrease to finish off. And you'll see that I have crossed over into your darker area. That's because we are redefining part of this as part of the back of the neck, as opposed to part of the underbelly. I'm then going to chain one and I'm going to turn my work and we're going to work back into the stitches we've just made. So it starts with two single crochet. And then we have three repeats of a decrease and a single crochet. And you'll note that this short row is actually longer than the first short row and it curves back around the other side. That's just helping to balance our neck in that space. So that is our second short row. So now we are just going to chain one and turn again and work two more short rows to finish closing in the back of the head. So those are the final three decreases and we are still chaining one and turning at the end of that row. Which brings us to, I know it's everybody's least favorite row in any pattern. What I mean by that is it's time to crochet around the ends to create the new round, the new status quo, as it were. So you'll note that we chained one and turned at the end of that row. So the first three stitches of this one, we're going to be working into the three decreases that we worked last. So one, two, three. So those, those are nice, easy ones. So you're going to turn your work and you're going to look at the edges of these rows and in them you're going to fit one, two, three and four. So note that fourth one is going to fall in the join between your two colours there. So one, two, three, and four. So it wouldn't be a complicated knots pattern if I didn't try and torture you a little bit. So. In that fourth stitch, we're actually going to change to our dark color. Same way as you've been doing earlier. Everything is really just a, sing a single crochet. We're just changing to our other color. And now along the underside of the head, we are going to work eight front post single crochet. So we did those earlier. So that just means that we are working around the post of the stitch. And we're doing it eight times. Now we do these stitches, not, not to be mean. These stitches are to help pull the head into a slightly different angle to the body. This will help lock that in as opposed to just letting it like flop. This will give you a more pronounced head tilt. We like our crochet works to have intention. Seven and one more. Eight. And in that eighth one, we are changing back to our pale color. <laughs> so we're nearly done. We have four stitches left to do, and they're going to fall up the other side of those edges. So we can see here that that is the start of our row really clearly. So we know that that's the start. We have four stitches to place here. So we're going to do one, two, three, and four. So one. Two, should be about halfway. Three, and if you're really, really stuck, you can honestly work a fourth one in the side of your first stitch, but I'm gonna put mine here. Just be aware of going too deep into the rows because they will it will pull your work and you'll look like you've got little holes where there aren't any. So that's four. So there is our new round. It is a round of 19. And I know that all of these odd row numbers are really bothering me in this pattern, but for some reason it just seems to work. So once again, I'm gonna give a check to the strands that I've pulled across inside. These ones here feel like they're loose enough. You could snap the eyes on and stuff at this point if you want, but I am going to continue working up the body and then I will come back and finish off those little bits and pieces. Pulling in a little prop monster here. 
So we are currently at this point here. You can see under there, that's the, that's the front post single crochet row that we just put in. Might be able to see him a little bit easier on sitting dude who doesn't have a name at this point. Uh, so feel free to leave suggestions in the comments. But you can see how that front post stitch has pulled the head into position and those short rows are helping curve that neck forward. We are now going to work up this little bell of a body. We're going to stop a couple of rows out from the narrowest point of this piece so that we can stuff it and snap the backs on our eyes. But for now, you're just going to work up this main trunk, swapping between your mid-tone and your dark tone. So there we are. We are now at the end of whatever row number is currently on the screen. <laughs> what I do know is that we have an opening at the back here that is 24 stitches around. Just excuse me while I just spin to win. There we go. The next thing we're going to be doing is narrowing down until we hit the base of the tail. So before I go any further, I need to stop and do some project admin as it were. So the next thing we need to do is finish snapping on our eyes if you haven't already. Now you do have the option now of stuffing, checking if you like the shape of the eyes, removing the stuffing and snapping the backs on, but I'm just going to wing it because I personally don't mind a little bit of a wonk in the personality. Uh, I'm discovering more and more this year that uh, I don't mind so much when my creations turn out a little bit crooked. I, I actually find it really charming and, and endearing and I think it makes them special. Alright, so I've peeled back the layers. And let's see if I can't get a pop sound for you. You ready? Do the other one. You know what? Better than nothing. I'll take it. So those are his eyes snapped on. And now we're going to stuff. So I'm going to just turn this all back in the right way because he got a little warped. And with this one here, just like with the frog, it's important that you stuff one little bit at a time. So I'm going to start by snuff. So I'm going to start by stuffing just the end of his nose. I'm then going to focus on each of his cheeks. In fact, you might even want to just roll up a little ball of stuffing and, and stuff that in there to help it hold its shape. It's just, you put so much work into like the stitches to create something and then you stuff it. And if you're not careful, it all just turns back into like a big spongy blob. It's like, okay, cool. <laughs> so there we go. I've stuffed carefully both of those cheeks. And now I'm going to fill the hollow in the middle of the head with a focus on getting this head to, to bow out the way I want it to. So stuffing that yarn all the way up and in. A little pinch to help it shape a little bit. So that's what we're looking like. And I'm going to do the body and I don't have to be as precious with the body, but I am still going to make sure that that chest is formed nicely. We want a nice flow from the head into the body. So make sure that you've stuffed that neck adequately. I think this guy's fatter than the other guys. <laughs> All right, it's official. Blue likes to snack. And there we go. And I do think this is one of those projects where you have to trust the process because that does not look like a red panda to me right now. Anywho, so we have three more rows to work up, work up that are part of this body, and then we're working on the tail instead. So again, pulling in our little prop dude. I mentioned that we are forming the tail as one piece with the body. This is not a piece we're sewing on, but what that means is that all of our decreases are being loaded on the underside of this body piece so that the opening is going to be closer to the top of the back than the bottom. And that'll make sense as we work this up. So we're going to start with eight single crochet in our mid tone. Changing back to our dark tone in that final stitch. I'm then going to work six decreases around the underside of the belly. And then this final one, we're changing back to our mid tone. And we finish off the row with four single crochet. Like so. So what you would have seen there is that we kept it to single crochet along the top, but we put all of our decreases along the bottom. We still reduced down to 18 stitches from 24, but instead of narrowing it down evenly so that the opening would be in the middle of the back, what we've done is we've moved that opening up to the top. And now in the next row, we're gonna move it kind of up again. So we start with six single crochet. Like so. I then work a decrease, changing to my darker color again. Work three decreases in my darker color, changing back to my mid tone.
and finish off the row with two decreases. So you should be able to really see now what we're doing. So you'll notice that the opening is clinging to this upper edge and we're closing in the bottom side of it. So that's kind of the power of where you're positioning your decreases. So we now just have one final row to work that's going to narrow this opening down to six single crochet. Just like so. So we're not trimming off, we're not finishing off, but that is the head and body done. And we're gonna just continue working from here up into the tail. For now, what I want you to do is add any additional stuffing. I get that it's only a small opening, but use a pencil or a poking implement. I'm gonna be using nature's poking implements. And just make sure that you've really gotten stuffing all the way up to the end of this butt. Like so. So I'm pretty happy with that at this point. So the next thing we're gonna be doing is working up this tail. So we're gonna start by working around the six single crochet opening that we have and basically just broadening it out into the shape of the tail. Now, this curve of the tail is not formed with short rows. We are done with those for today, you'll be pleased to know. But what we're actually gonna do is load increases on the front of the tail and decreases on the back of the tail. And that is actually gonna help it curve upwards. And this is actually, and this is actually what it looks like when you get those in the right spots. Yellow is what happens if you get sassy and miss a stitch. Curves upwards. And we will be working that in both of our colors. So don't necessarily trim this off just yet, but they are solid rows in each color. So there are, it's less color change intensive than say the face or the body was. So you'll see there, I'm just leaving my color attached and we're going to work the first three rows of the tail in our mid tone. So I'm gonna start by just working six single crochet around. So just like that. So there isn't really any trick to this tail other than, than, like I said, we're gonna be loading our increases on one side. Pay attention to that if it's something that's interesting to you. But we are now just going to continue and work up the length of this tail. We are finally done with our mid tone and I'm just going to trim that off. The rest of the rows will be made in your dark tone. So at this point, we are just going to stuff the tail. Now keep in mind that the more you stuff this joint in the middle, the less movement it will have. Now, stuff your tail. So I'm stuffing mine at least down to the base of the tail, but I am not particularly focused on stuffing the join. And I am stuffing all the way up to the opening. Now the rest of the rows will form a little bit of a dome, so more stuffing is required. You should stuff that as you go. I probably won't stop and focus on it from here on out, but stuff the last little bit of the tail as you, as you stitch it up. And now it is finally closing time. There's no more color changes. We're just working around and around until the tail is complete. And finish off. So you'll note that you have this little gap at the tip of the tail, grab your hook, and weave that tail through the remaining six stitches. I use the front loops only, and it's basically gonna act like a reverse magic ring, and we're gonna just pull it tight to close. Ready? And tuck that end away inside. So there is the head, body, and tail of your red panda. And we're gonna pop that to one side. Right, next up, we're gonna make his ears. So one thing to note about the ear pattern is that I've included the little color patch on the back of the ear to blend in with the body. I felt like that was a really notable thing about the red panda. They have big white fluffy fronts, but colored backs to like slope into the rest of them. So we are doing more color changes on these ears. However, if you don't want to, just make the whole piece in your lightest color. No one will question it, it's fine. So grab your lightest color, for me it's white. And we're going to start with a magic ring of six. So there's our magic ring of six. Now in the last stitch in that magic ring, we wanna change color. So I've got the last two loops there. And you're going to change to your mid tone. So that is the color that you used for the top of the body. Like so. So for row two, you're going to work two stitches in your mid tone. So the first one is normal. And the second one will be a color change back to your lightest color. You will then work an increase, two single crochet, 
and an increase in your lightest color, but in that increase we are changing back to our mid-tone, like so. I'm going to put a mid-tone stitch into each of those two, changing back to my white, and then work an increase, and then three single crochet, and then an increase, and then in the final single crochet I'm changing back to my blue and we're on to the final row now and I'm going to work three single crochet all in my mid tone. So the first two will line up with your previous blue stitches and your third one will line up in the first white one after them. Change back to your white, snap back to reality, then work an increase, then four single crochet, and then an increase, and then one single crochet and finish off. So this is one of those pieces that you do have to like shape a little bit after we've finished stitching. So what you're going to do is flatten it out so that your blue triangle is taking up one entire side. You should see white on either side of it. Then you're going to flip it over so that the white side or lightest side is facing you and fold it because we want that color triangle to be the back of the ear and we want a white triangle at the front to be the front of the ear. So there is the first ear and you are going to need two of them. So there's my two, they both have a little blue triangle on the back. I'm going to pop them to one side. So as I've shown in this video and I'll pop them back up on the screen now, there are a number of different poses that you can make with this pattern, but it does mean that you should decide now what pose you want yours to be in because that will tell you how many front legs to make and how many back legs to make. Let me explain. So for example, on the sitting and standing varieties, we have two front legs and two back legs that are using a slightly different pattern. However, if you want your red panda to be in a standing neutral pose, you're going to use four front legs for this because it looks less weird. I don't know how else to explain it. Keep that in mind as we move into the next section. So I'm going to start by making the front legs. So we start at the sole of the foot and we basically just work up a tube. Now these pieces are worked entirely in your darkest colour. There is no colour changes to worry about. And finish off. And we're once again just going to weave around to close off this opening. Like so. so you'll note that the stuffing, as mentioned, only goes to about the halfway point. The top half of the leg is relatively empty. Now, you will want at least two of those, but you may want as many as four. So make sure, like I said, that you've thought about how you want to pose your panda at this point. So the back legs are basically a shorter, chunkier version of the front leg. We make a less pronounced toe, and it basically just looks like he's wearing really fluffy pants. Other than that, it's worked up in basically the same manner. And then we finish off. So there is the hind leg. So when compared with the front leg, you'll see what I was talking about. It's just a couple of rows shorter and it's one stitch around wider and it just gives you sort of a sturdier trunk. But this isn't required for the neutral pose. As I mentioned three or four times now, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. So assuming you want back legs, you want two of them. So I'm gonna pull all of my pieces in. There they are. And I'd say we'd start by attaching the tail, but we've already done that. So what we're gonna do first is actually pin and sew on the ears just because they are in the same place on all of them 
and then we'll talk about legs and I'll show you how to pin for each of the poses that I've done so far but feel free to like be creative with it I'd love to see them in all kinds of different positions panda yoga poga so your ears are going to line up with row nine of your panda now just because we've done that front post stitching along the front it can sometimes be easier to get a clear count if you move down the side of the cheek so one two three four five six seven eight nine so I'm going to mark row nine I'm just going to follow it around and drop a few pins here and there so that I can see where it is really really clearly so there is my row nine I'm going to grab my first ear it doesn't matter which because they are exactly the same I'm going to re-pinch it and I'm going to follow a line from that starting magic ring up to that first eyebrow and back to row nine you can use your hook to help line that up and I'm going to put one pin in the first corner of that ear in that position so we have that first corner pinned in row nine and this second corner is actually going to go sort of between rows 10 and 11 so we want to pivot it so it lines up just behind the top of this little cheek patch you can see a little strip of color in between where the ear is and the cheek is and I'm going to pin that as I said to it's basically between rows 10 and 11. you can add additional pins at this point to help secure it into place so I'm going to pop a couple in at the back like so I'm going to do the same thing on the other side so following from the middle of the magic ring past the top point of the eyebrow to row nine and that's where the top corner of this ear will go when it's folded nicely and then pivoting that ear down and to the back and securing it so those are the starting positions for your ears so just because people's stitches tend to fall differently at this point you should always just look at it does it look right to you do you think those ears should be further forward for the back closer together turned more just really look at your piece and just work out is this what a red panda looks like to you all right so having checked from every angle I am pretty happy with this I'm going to grab my needle it's currently strung with yellow from when I made banana and I'm going to use my mid-tone to sew on the ears We'll be sewing the rest on using our dark color so you don't need a huge amount of this mid-tone and I am just going to sew those on now now if you're looking for a sewing guide I recommend you go back to the bear video that I did last week I'm not going to go through all of that again but we are using the same techniques on this guy that we used on our bear there's the first one done and I'm now just going to do the same thing to the other one just like that so his little ears are now firmly attached and they pass the, the tug test always do the tug test is that going to come off when pulled if the answer is yes keep sewing so that's our base and we have legs but now we have a variety of different poses to choose from so I'm gonna start with the neutral pose and that is what banana is in I'll lay him down there so you can see so the trick to these legs is really basically just lining either the hip or the shoulder up with the change in the color even if it means that your head is slightly twisted as has happened with banana that's fine your, your idea is that your legs go on the seam between those two colors so to start with the neutral pose I obviously only made two front legs for this guy today but I will show you how I pin them on on one side so the idea is that if your toes facing forward you line one up just behind the head so that it covers that colored patch you put a couple of pins in then you take your other one and you line it up right as far down the body as you can because red pandas are surprisingly long boys they kind of throw all other standard proportions out the window like so you would then check to make sure that your panda can stand and stitch those on so that is what he will look like he would look like but with two more legs obviously in that neutral standing pose so that's how you do that next up I'm gonna do our little spooky boy so he is standing up in his gar don't threaten me type position he's very big and very scary and should be respected let's take these legs off here so for those we're actually gonna flip our legs and instead of having this be a foot with this being the sole of the foot we're going to have this be the back of the hand and as though the palm was in there so it's like he's going rawr you know rawr 
So basically lining that shoulder joint up in the same location, but with the leg flipped, I'm going to pin once through the middle of the arm, and then I'm going to pivot it upwards until the hand is covering that cheek. And then going to pin it a second time to hold it into position. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side with the other front arm and pin in place. I'm going to put another pin in there just to hold that one. It feels a little loose. So there are his big spoopy grar arms. Don't know if any of those words were in, <laughs> were in English, but hopefully the pictures tell a thousand words. And then you've got these little leg chonks. Now they also have like a front. You'll see that we've got this tiny little toe. And you're just going to line that hip joint up basically where the other leg would have been pinned on the on the the default position. Rotate the leg until he's in a standing position. And do the same thing on the other side as well. Now the trick to this position is actually we're using the tail to cheat. It provides a third point of stability so he can actually stand up. So check that your panda can stand and then once again just sew on all four limbs and then it's a show it's a showdown. Rah! So that is your standing position. And the final one that I have made so far is a cute little sort of sitting pose. So you should, you, you can probably work most of these out just by looking at them, but I just, I feel like it's, it's nice to kind of run through them. So for those ones there, the arms are once again being turned back into feet. So we're flipping them back around and this is now the sole of the foot again, but I'm still just pinning at that shoulder. Do the same thing at the other side. So I'm going to bend them up and around the body slightly. That's one and then that's our other one. So they're sitting there like that. I'm then going to pivot the leg so that the foot is even with the front foot there. You can see that. So I've just pivoted from a standing position up to there. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So. And then he's a very good little boy and he's just he's sitting nicely and they can stop and have a little tea party. So those are the sort of the three poses I have done so far. I'm going to try, I think, something a little bit different for this guy, just because I love the fact that they're different colors and we can put them in different poses. So what I'm thinking, I don't know, guys, do we like the idea of him like lying on his back, grabbing his feet? The other option that I, I've been thinking of is like sitting and, growl and growling. Rawr. But yeah, long story short. Pick your pose, pin your legs into position, and sew them on. And that's what I'm going to do now. There we go. So as you can see, I've opted for this little splat pose, as though he's lying flat on his tummy with his legs out in front of him. Now, the last thing we need to do is add a nose and some eyelids. So for the nose, I just take a little black yarn and stitch over the top of the magic ring at the end of the snout. just like that. I'm then going to take a little bit of my dark color and add some eyelids. And there we go. And there are all of my finished, not just red pandas. They are just a happy little bunch of jelly beans. Okay, so I hope you had fun making these with me today. Let me know in the comments which one has your favorite color and pose. But other than that, I will see you next week. Bye.